Welcome back to Build Something Cool. My name is Dale. Today we're going to talk about grinding the jaws on a drill chuck. And it's been some interesting things that I've discovered that I think you guys are going to like. But before we get into that, how many of you guys like working with metal and want to learn more? Well, I'm designing this channel just for you, whether you're a beginner or you've been doing it for 10, 20, 30 years. I'm designing this channel just for you. So please hit the subscribe button if you want to learn more about metal. How many of you out there, raise your hand, if you have a drill chuck where the jaws are worn out? I've got about four or five. Yeah, I've got several of them that way. And I end up not using them. I've got some really nice chucks. What advantages are there to grinding these chuck jaws? Well, one is to save money. A new set of jaws for these run 80, 90 bucks. Kind of expensive, especially when I buy these used for about anywhere from 10 to 20. The next advantage is, of course, well, recycling. <laughs> Okay, I'm joking. Um, I'm not worried about putting these in the landfill because they're just too nice to do that. And I've never found a chuck I couldn't actually repair. Now, what are the disadvantages? Well, the disadvantages are you're going to change the capacity of this. It's not going to be able to hold a small drill bit. But this one here I've ground out. It looks really, really good. It'll clamp down on a sixteenth of an inch drill bit up to a half inch. Now, a lot of you know when you're trying to put a half inch drill in a chuck, they don't always fit. The second disadvantage to doing this is you kind of lose the gripping force that are on these chuck jaws. And it's really kind of tough that the shank on a drill bit is really soft and these jaws are actually designed to clamp in and really get some pressure on it. Well, when you grind them out, you end up adding more surface and that surface is divided out over a larger area of the drill bit so they may not hold as tight but I still think it's well worth doing, especially on a super chuck. When I first started this idea of grinding the chuck, I thought I'd take the chuck jaws out, set them up in some sort of bracketing system, and grinding them on the surface grinder. But I really had a challenge in that I couldn't find a good data point or datum point to really line it up on. In other words, I couldn't predict fixture of the jaws consistently so I could do it over and over and be very repeatable. So that was really a challenge. Let's talk about the theory of grinding these chuck jaws in. It's going to be very unorthodox. So I did some research. I actually didn't find a lot of information. I found one guy on YouTube that actually inserted a couple pieces of metal in between each of the jaws and clamped it down. And that gave the force to hold the chuck jaws in place. Well, what I'm going to do and again, I don't say it's the right way, it's just the way I did it and it seemed to work out really well was I used centrifugal force. And the goal is to get these chuck jaws to spin so quickly that they're forced out into the position. Like I said, it's kind of unorthodox, but it does work. Now, like I said, the other choice is put a couple metal pieces in there and clamp this down. I don't know about you guys, but trying to get little fragments of metal to hold into place Boy, it just doesn't work well for me. The other thing is these chuck jaws still move quite a bit. If we were to put something in, I'm going to be kinking these out. So I just want to come up with a different idea. So join me on this journey and see what happens. If you can see here in this image, you can see that just the end of this chuck, you see a little triangle right there? Well, that's the, the real wear that was on this. And I could use the chuck the way it was, but I just never, never really liked it or trusted it. The first thing we need to do is, is open up the chuck. We want to clean out all the grease and any grit that may be inside that would prevent these jaws from actually seating in to the body of the chuck. Before we get too far in this video, I want to talk about a controversy that was on my last video about cleaning up one of these chucks, and that was where do you place the jaws here when pressing off this outer ring? Some people say it's here. One guy actually called me an idiot because I don't do it this way. But Jacobs actually says you need to bring your jaws out about halfway and then press off this ring. And they do that for a particular reason. It's actually in their instruction manual. But I've done it the wrong way. I've done it all the way in. And what happens is these teeth or these jaws actually can engage in this back ring. So when you're trying to push it off, it binds up and either the ring is going to break or one of the jaws are going to break. And I know that by experience because I've done it on a different style chuck. It will damage one of these. So remember, bring these jaws out. Now, if you're worried about pressing up against these to take this ring off, you could put a pipe here 
and press up against there. And it's probably a great way of doing it. Why didn't I use a hydraulic press to take this chuck apart? Well, there's a really good reason for that is my hydraulic press is sitting in back. It's sitting on a pallet in pieces. So I actually picked one up, I don't know, about two months ago, right before the Bar Z Summer Bash. And in order to get in the truck, I had to take it all apart to fit it into the truck. And I just haven't had time to put it back together again and rebuild it. But I probably do a video on that. Leave down in the comments if you want to see it on me reassembling this hydraulic press. It's a very unique press that it's taken me about five years to find this particular style and design. First thing we need to do is we need to take the chuck apart, clean it up inside and out. We want to get rid of all the grease. The grease is going to attract any of the grinding dust. We're going to actually grind the chuck jaws in the chuck itself. I just did a video a short time ago about grinding in a lathe chuck. It was actually a six jaw chuck. And when you grind in the chuck jaws, you need to put a force on them so the jaws are pressed out so when they clamp down on something that they're in the correct position. We need to do the same thing on this drill chuck. So what we're going to do is we're going to take advantage of centrifugal force. We have two bearing surfaces that we need to be in contact with. And when they're fit inside the chuck, when they're fit inside the chuck, they need to press into position. So that's how we're going to do it. We're going to do a centrifugal force. Now, because of the way the chuck is designed, that most of the pressure of the chuck or most of the chuck jaw is inside the chuck itself. So when we spin this around, it's going to force it into position, or at least that's what the theory is. So we put the whole thing back together again, very clean. We're going to chuck it up in a four jaw chuck. Now I was a little challenged because the shaft on this was, was almost too small for my four jaw. I want to give a shout out to Edge Technology for sending me out a tool post indicator to try. I gotta say, it's been a joy to use. It's a lot easier to use for me than a Noga, because a Noga, there's, well, you always gotta find a place that the magnet can stick to. This, you just take out a tool, put this in place, and go to work. And this one here is accurate to a half a thousandth, so it's very nice. Here we're going back to the tool post grinder that I made in the previous video with the six jaw chuck. I also went to stress, which I don't do very often, is about safety, please put on a full face shield. I've had one of these little stones blow up on me once. And what you need to do is you need to true up the grinding wheel. I started out with a diamond and then went in with a dressing stick. Also that the chuck is very loose and it's gonna move on you. So what you wanna do is you wanna take some electrician's tape, wrap it around it so it's not gonna spin at all. Here we are setting the speed to the lay. Like I said, it's 1500 RPMs. And we're starting our grind. And we're just trying to take a very little here, guys. We're not, we don't want to put a lot of force in that grinding wheel. For one is it's an interrupted cut. So again, that wheel could blow off. Look at that. So now, if we look inside there, we have a little problem. As you'll see, it tapers. At the toe of the jaw, you can see it's a little wider than it is at the back. So I was trying to figure out, well, how, did, how do I want to fix this? Is it a problem? Well, what I ended up doing was changing my compound. Now, I just took a guess on this. I decided to set the compound at about one degree and ground it in that way. Now here, I didn't do a really good job of spinning this. You can see that I'm not turning the handle consistent. Whenever you're putting a, a force or turning the handle on the compound, you need to be really consistent. So here I'm putting in an end mill. Now I'm not gonna be milling anything with it. I'm actually just checking it because it's the roundest thing I have in the shop. And we're running out, it looks like about a thousand. So I think that's really good. So now we have to take the chuck all apart again because we need to add the grease to it, clean out all the grinding dust and grease it up. But as I'm looking at these chuck jaws, I'm just not that satisfied with the condition. You can see that the centers look just not ground as much as the heel and the toe do. So I'm going to put the whole thing back together again and re-grind it.
So I had to re-grind it again. And the jaws look so much better on the second grind. I don't know what went wrong the first time. I guess I just didn't take enough time. When I was turning the handle on the compound, I'm looking at that video and going, I really wasn't putting a consistent radial force on it. And that was probably causing me some problems. So the second time I did it, I was really careful to get my hands in there and spin it as gently as I can. I don't have an automated system for that. I've seen people use drills with shafts on them and I think that's a great way to go. I just didn't have one set up. And I gotta say, the chuck worked out really well. Now, the first time I ground it was out about a thousandth. The second time I ground it, it was out about three thousandths. So I'm not exactly sure where the variance is, but it is within tolerance of what Jacob says a chuck should be. I'm really happy with the results. So again, if metalworking is your thing, hit the subscribe button. You can also find me on Instagram and Facebook where you kind of get a behind the scenes of what's going on here in the shop. All right, guys, till next time, go out in the shop, build something cool. Thanks.